All right, Georgia is through two scrimmages now. Let's talk about some of the gossip that we hear from time to time after these. Uh, so generally speaking, I'm not going to give you every single detail. That's what Dog Post is for. You can see it. I'm going to stick it up on the screen right now. Go to dogpost.com, uh, what we we're hearing, insiders gossip about Georgia's scrimmages so far. Look, uh, it's a really well-read story. Um, I don't really write real quick after scrimmages. I don't necessarily trust stuff sometimes usually we do stuff and put it out uh, after lunch on sunday and this happened last sunday so i didn't get a chance to talk about it um last sunday but globally speaking i think uh what's really going on at georgia this um about said semester this this spring the offense really could be very good coming into the season and uh you know Right now, they're not dealing with their full slate of running backs. You know, uh, ETN didn't do a lot Saturday. The Saturday before that, he didn't do anything. They're still missing Branson Robinson. But Carson Beck has been very efficient, very good, etc. cetera. Um, one, uh, let me make sure I'll read you a little bit of this from the report. Um Talking about, okay, uh, Beck connected with Arian Smith for a touchdown on Saturday. He also had a touchdown pass to Miami transfer Colby Young. So it's going to take a little bit of time for people to get used to, uh, like, got the new guys that are coming in, um, in terms of who to pay attention to on G Day. Make sure you know the numbers and all that. That can get very confusing. But I think I do want to talk just for a second about Carson before I shift to the two other things. One will be about the, the line of scrimmage. And the other will be like newcomers, which is something people always really want to talk about, um, at least on dog post. But when you step back and you take a look at Carson Beck coming into this thing, the guy is one of the two leading Heisman candidates. And, you know, Carson's going to is having to replace two extremely reliable, really three extremely reliable weapons in Bowers, McConkey, and Rosemary Jack Saint with newcomers uh, in some cases. Now, Ra Ra, uh, Dominic Lovett. I think Dominic Lovett is better than people realize, first of all. You got Dominic Lovett, Ra Ra, um, and uh, Dylan Bell that forms sort of a nucleus of guys that get you where to get, you, you want to go. Now, I think Smith, Arian Smith, like I said earlier, um, who, who had a touchdown on Saturday, um, Arian Smith has been, uh, I'm, I mean, I, I've been told he's with the one some. So, I mean, I you know, we only see so much. So you're trusting on what sometimes what people are saying. And, and you know, usually the folks that we talk to, one reason why I wait a while to say stuff is um, I, I just never trust any one person, no matter how right they are all the time. I just, I'm not good. I'm not good with that. I've been burned before. So you want to be real careful with that stuff. And, um, I think for Carson Beck, this has been a good spring. Um, is he going to be, you know, here's, here's the question that I write, or here's the statement, um, that that's written in the report. It says UGA doesn't release, uh, statistics on scrimmages anymore, but we've been told that Beck has been very good. Will that be the case at G Day? Probably, if we're being honest. So I think Car, you know, Carson's not. You know, the only thing that you need, you're gonna, the only way that you'll be concerned about Carson Beck leaving uh, Athens on Saturday is if he got hurt somehow, which is pretty unlikely. Now then, the discussion about um, offensive line and a defensive line. So. The offense has had a good spring. There's, I, I just don't really know how else to say it. Is that because, and this is the, sort of the stuff that we talk about on Dog Post, is that because, why, right? Is that because they're really good? Is it that because, is that because, you know, the defense is not where they want to be on, on the front? You know, is it, are, are linebackers missing things and making it seem like the defensive line is messing up when it's not really a D line and all this? People that watch scrimmages aren't coaches. I'm not a coach. Uh, I'm not I'm certainly not a football coach. So, um, but there's just too much. What's the word? Uh, there's too much um, acknowledgement 
that the offensive line, or excuse me, that the offense has played pretty well. Um, having a really old quarterback can do that. So I, I don't, I don't, you know, Kirby was kind of uh, declarative this past week talking about the defensive line. You know, we'll see more. Everybody gets to see it on on Saturday for a while. I've not watched Clemson's spring game yet. I read the reviews, and it was rough for the quarterbacks. Um, sometimes spring games can be like that. Um, Aaron Murray knows what I'm talking about. But it, these guys aren't Aaron Murray. That's the problem. Is this a consistent, you know, sort of, well, very inconsistent play from your starting quarterback? That's just not good. We'll get to see better, you know, more reality in the near future. I, I, listen, I want to point this out. I've got a few more of these each to remaining. Keely Ringo signed Dog Structions, uh, which I have some of. This will run out. I think I have three left of, of uh, Stetson Bennett. So I don't really promote these a lot. There's not a lot of these. There, there are, um, you, you may have seen the number already there. There's, <laughs> this is number 49 of 50. So if you, we're this that would mean there's two there there are three remaining and that's it so link below or just type in you know go to dog posts and look up double dogs it's actually in the uh report about uh how to watch g-day as it relates to the younger players i would pay attention to to three guys and i shouldn't say younger unfortunately in this case because like CJ Allen's a young player and, and he's really good too. Um, but yeah, but in this case, these are like brand new players at Georgia. I would pay attention to Sokovi white and these other two, you know, as well, KJ Bolden and Ellis Robinson. So Sokovi white with a really nice catch and run. You really would love to see guys, Catch it, snatch it, and, and be gone. If you're making people at this level, if you're running away from people at this level, or if you're making people at this level miss, like this is not Tucker Football League. This is, there's no, you know, this isn't 135 Lions and all this stuff from back, people from DeKalb County know what I'm talking about. This is the SEC, and you just don't run away from people. So if you're doing that and you're doing pretty, or you're getting away, or you're just impressing, that's, that's a good sign. That's step one. The guys in the secondary that I'm talking about, Robinson and at K.J. Bolden, they were both five-star guys. Uh, we did not get to see Robinson in person, but all of the data that you could see, the, what you could watch, it, it was certainly all there. Um, you know, saw plenty of Bolden, as I've talked about endlessly, I feel like. It's not surprising that those guys are flashing. Robinson seems like the most likely of probably the freshman, maybe the linebacker from Texas, but uh, the linebacker from, yeah, from Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Now I'm, I, I, forget, I blanked on his name and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop and just, and, and um, this, this happens sometimes when you do this, Justin Williams, <laughs> it's not surprising that Robinson Justin Williams and KJ Bolden, although Justin Williams has not been someone who's like people have been jumping up and down about yet. Um, probably because the linebackers are absolutely loaded. Um, it cannot be surprising that people are saying, Oh, well, who is, what number, who is that? And it's like, it's Bolden or who is that? And it's Robinson. So, but again, it, it's not the same on the practice field as it is when you're lining up against Clemson, when you're lining up at Kentucky, when you're lining up on the road in Tuscaloosa, you get through September without a loss. You're, I would say you're clearly the number one team in the country. We're not at that point yet. And just to, to, just to be frank, you could not get through that and still make the claim that you're the best team. You just played a tough game on the road, either at Kentucky or um, in, um, in Tuscaloosa. We'll just see. Um, but I think overall – there is a lot of, there's not as much excitement as there has been in the past for whatever reason. I think, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't really know another way to put this. Um, you know, after Georgia lost its national championship virginity uh, here lately, people are not going to get overly excited, I don't think, about a player. Because um, the, the, the truth of the matter is that no one player is making this program. Now, Carson Beck's really important. Malachi Starks, really important. Ernest Green, really important. I would say, frankly, at this point, ETN is pretty important. You know, that that's the other thing. You're getting some, like, mixed – well, what else is new in the spring? You're getting some, like, mixed signals as it relates to uh, – wow, man, this run game. I mean, like, you can't tell half the time because all they're doing is throwing the football, like, 60%, 70% of the time. I mean, you're, you're trying to get work for – Gunner, you're trying to get work for, you know, all the quarterbacks. And so that means you're chunking it a lot. Um, but no one player is going to, you know, you can't, there's no one person you're like, man, you can't lose that guy. I don't, that's not on this team with the exception, I would say, of Beck. And I have to say, you could navigate a lot of the season with Gunner Stockton as your starting quarterback. Could you win the national championship? It would be harder. It would be a lot harder for sure. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. It just would be harder. And, you know, you you wouldn't want to go down that path. I think, you know, the other thing, um, when, you you know, you you talk to folks about scrimmages or this scrimmage, whatever, um, sometimes, uh, the decision making of the quarterbacks, that's harder for people to judge. Like, where should the ball go? Where should the ball go? It just because the guy made a good throw, like it was an impressive throw, doesn't mean it was the correct decision. And um, you know, <laughs> that's that's something that there's no way people can know that. I mean the vast majority of people who, who watch these scrimmages, they are, they are insiders as it relates to being there because they have donated typically. Do they know what they're talking about with football? I mean, yeah, they know some, they're not a coach. So that's the problem with these scrimmages being closed is that, um, you know, it is such a mess of moving parts that people, people good, good, really good, you know, folks, Um, all, I think, I think the biggest thing, if you're not a legitimate college coach, that you're watching a scrimmage or like, you know, um, like when, if you go back and watch Clemson play their spring game, which I would, I would, I would encourage everybody to do, do they, are there a bunch of penalties? Does anyone flash and are the quarterbacks just looking bad? Like not, oh, that was a dumb throw. What was he doing? Or that was a bad decision. But, like, is he consistently doing dumb stuff? Um, that's – any of those things, you know, two of those three are really bad. One of them is, oh, well, maybe this guy can do something. Um, but with, when you've got an offensive line like this group – and I talk about it in the report too, okay? I talk about Green, Fairchild, Ratledge, Truss, Wilson, Morris, Freeling, etc. I mean, they have got guys, man. I mean, you're not – you're not – I'm sure I am leaving people out, but they're, they're going to be okay on the offensive line. Not one of those people that I just mentioned is a true, is a true freshman, which this group, I mean, the Georgia, the Georgia people that I trust are very excited about um, the offensive line coming in. Calhoun, Daniels, Easley, Harrison, Tolliver, Uini, Uini, I think it's probably Uini. Um, we don't get pronunciation guides. We have to wait for Georgia to give that. So um, it's a really good group. It's a really big group. Um, I think Harrison, or well, excuse me, Daniels for sure, and Calhoun for sure are the two I would pay attention to. Um, Harrison as well. But they're, they're, they're all, it's not going to be surprising if any of those guys play downs. I have seen enough of Calhoun to know. And part of our problem is, you know, watching bias. Um, he's, 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 
his should develop into a really good player. But this young group, man, I mean, Williams um, from, you know, Texas, uh, Robinson, obviously KJ, who we've seen a bunch of. I, I love Quintavious Johnson personally, just as an athlete playing out there. It reminded me a lot of Devontae Wyatt. He was asked to do a lot at Mays. It was, he was asked to do too much at Mays, I should say. I think he is the, uh, to me, if there's ever going to be another three-star guy that kind of just explodes, it would be him. So you, you don't get a lot of guys that are like that um, out there. But I, I think there's a lot to be, um, I think there's a lot to be, what's the word, uh, not positive, but, uh, you know, looking forward to in this season. Um, this is a good Georgia team. Are they going to be great? The offense is going to be great, it seems like to me. Now, the defense, has it ever been bad? Let's be honest. When's the last time they gave up 20 points a game? I mean, maybe in 2020 where they got torched by Alabama and Florida. Um, I mean, they Kentucky, I don't think, scored 10 that season. Auburn didn't score 10. Tennessee scored some, and that was because Seth and the ball was going in the end zone, all this stuff. So, this is a good. This is a good team. This team's gonna be really hard to beat. And and one 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 other thing here too. I just finished watching South Carolina's women play. Georgia and the Carolina women are very similar as it relates to. They are the best programs right now in their sport. That does not mean they will win the national championship. But I will tell you what. These guys have lately. I mean those those photos don't just happen. It's all those guys who are sweating out there, at you know, 5.45 in the morning or whatever it is. I, you know, I don't know. That, that that's, that's the only way to do it. And, you know, Dawn Staley is a superb coach. She's the best coach in women's basketball. You could make the argument she's the best coach in the SEC in any sport. Now, I know that people will say, how could you say that about Kirby Smart? I'm not saying that about Kirby Smart. I'm saying that about Dawn Staley. Uh, she is outstanding. So, um, Georgia could learn a lot from watching those Carolina women um, and the turnover that they had and then going undefeated. Um, you know, they didn't win the national championship this past season. They were probably the best team, but they didn't win it. And um, they did this year, though, and they were the best team. And can Georgia do that this spring, this fall? I think they can. We'll see, though.